life, often daily, now it seems, keeps reminding you why you've done the right thing. I was around friends and their other halves recently. Topics generally fall towards the things we tend to discuss. Everyday life, choices, what's right, what's wrong, the problems, the pitfalls, you know, what shouldn't be, what should be. Anyway, I was around these people and, you know, they start wailing a bit about the same old distant problems about, you know, immigration and the way the world's heading, all the while ignoring the gynocentric foundations of how they live in the choices they make. That's the thing that always makes me smile. It's the, what about the children? What about the whales? What about the environment? Um, all the while people, their own ethics and morals in their own lives, they have none. You know, they don't look in the mirror. They don't make hard philosophical decisions. They don't make ethical and stoic, strong, disciplined decisions about their lives to make them better. And they know exactly what needs to be done within their own lives to make their lives better. But they avoid it by virtue signaling over the horizon, you know. Anyway, somehow or other, the topic of marriage came into it. And as often happens, these couples around me smirked at me and said, so human, why, why haven't you ever wanted to be married? And my answer is a standard one. Sell it to me. Convince me. And I know it's pointless, but when you put the onus on them, especially if you sort of point out what's in it for me, you know, why should I? What do I get out of it? And usually it's a whole nebulous kind of romantic, oh, well, these, these undefined things you'll get and metaphysical sort of belonging and romantic love that's sort of floating around. Nothing concrete, whereas I can point to very fundamental things as to why I never wanted marriage. The primary being I, I never wanted to be in the role of a father. I never wanted that responsibility. But past that, the big one for me was why should I give up my autonomy and individuality? What do I get for it? And usually they'll look at you really oddly like, that's a strange question. And I'm like, really? Um, the funny thing is you can tell them about all the rational dangers you're avoiding and everyone can nod and they'll ask you to do it anyway. You know, you tell them that the waters are infested with sharks and their retort to you is, why don't you just jump into the water and show the shark who's boss? These little chats for me are very laughable reminders why I think I've always done the right thing by protecting my autonomy and forging my own path, which isn't anything big. All that is is just protecting my freedom, independence and autonomy. And the system's argument through gynocentrism, women and the modern traditionalist is just jump into those shark infested waters, but Trust us, it'll all be great. Um, yeah, this notion of just jump into the water and show the shark who's boss, or jump into the lion's cage, show the gynocentric wild animal who's boss. And again, I'm not discounting the biological, rational impulse to procreate and want to do it. I know that it's the primary reason that I'm here is procreation. The fact that I don't want to do it does not negate that individually I cannot see how it serves me. You see, all they do is try and sell you shame and guilt. You know, why don't you get married? Why don't you jump into the gynocentric meat grinder? I'm sure you'll survive. You know, there's a small chance you will. Look, we can hold up lottery winners to show you that it's possible to win the lottery. But how can you convince the stable-minded and objectively rational people amongst us who are not gamblers? It's, it's, it's almost laughable to kind of see them fumbling around with, oh shit, I've got nothing else. They're not being affected by the shame or guilt or the short skirt or the big tits or the, you know, if you don't marry me, I'll leave you. Um, when a man's 
not perturbed by that. When a man's not swayed and he keeps asking, yeah, you've already said that, convince me, sell it to me, sell the benefit to me of not going my own way. Sell the benefit to me of getting married. What's in it for me? What do I get out of it? Why should I jump into the water? Why should I think of the species when gynocentrism clearly is not? They're not thinking of the future. Why should I work for a woman's dream of family and children? Why should I care about it by sacrificing my life when gynocentrism and feminism and the women today, they clearly don't care. You know, why should I care if they don't? I've, I've said it in a few videos. When a man becomes concretely rational, when that starts to dominate the front of his thinking all the time, when that becomes the barometer by which he makes decisions and he places himself first and says, okay, I'm open to all opinions. Convince me. You know, I'll hear your point of view and you hear my point of view. I'll tell you why I'm not. You're so adamant you're trying to shame me so much and push me so much as to why I should do what you want me to do. Sell it to me. Please, I'm open. And, you know, it's it's like listening to someone who's seen a ghost or seen a UFO and they're trying to convince you of its reality with no proof at all. So it was just really interesting um, being among these these adults who can vote and reproduce and supposedly raise children and then figuratively still holding the same mindset of an eight-year-old who believes in Santa Claus. That, you know, why don't I believe what they believe? And I just come back to the same thing. Okay, I'm listening. I, I'm, I'm completely open. Tell me why I'm missing out. Tell me why it's such a great idea. For the majority of guys, they'll give you all the reasons they're not interested in it guys in our circles. For me personally, I've never been reproductively motivated. I'll give you all the reasons I'm not interested in. And on top of the lack of interest, I'll give you all the dangers that make my lack of interest or being repelled by traditionalism. I'll give you all those reasons why I'm rationally not interested and why I'm rationally avoiding it for self-preservation as a cost-benefit analysis. I'll give you all of those. And all I'm asking is for just a little bit in return, aside from gynocentric romanticism and the female brain of, trust me, you know, aside from that, sell it to me. I'm all ears. I'm one who believes in freedom of speech and freedom of association. You know, I want to sharpen my opinions. I want to learn. I've largely got a scientific and open philosophical mind. I'm the kind of person that smiles when I see two different religions able to have a conversation and have a live and let live attitude. You know, I want to see people discuss. I want to see people help themselves through being responsible for their own reflections in those conversations. Um, so when I hear these traditionalists and these zombie wives and husbands, you see, all I have to do is just observe 99% of their lives of these traditional marriages, and all I see is husbands asking the wives for permission, whether they can do this, whether they can go somewhere, checking in with them, whether they can buy a toy for themselves, whereas the reciprocal is never true. She's never, she never seems to ask him for any permission. She has all the power in this relationship, and it's always deterred me that I don't have the final say in my life. And when I look at these neutered men who think they're the real man in their marriage, while the person behind the curtain is the wife pulling all the strings, and she knows it. Um, yeah, I just keep coming back to, convince me, tough guy. Convince me why you're, <laughs> convince me why your life is so great, why I should adopt it. I can convince you with a hundred things about the freedoms and autonomy I have. And it's no joke. I'm not talking bravado. It's just calm freedom, calm autonomy, calm, self-determined living. I can actually point to that. Whereas all these husbands and wives are trying to gang up on me 
at these barbecues and get-togethers and drinks um, and try and say, no, oh, it's just sad, human. You know, you're going to be alone and this fear of the future. And, you know, it's sad that you don't have this. And I could say, I don't, I really don't care. It's not sad. It's actually liberating I don't have this. I'm, I'm speaking a completely different language. They're saying, it's so sad you don't have this collar around your neck. And I'm saying, it's actually liberating I don't have that collar because I can move as freely as I want. And the funny thing is, most of the times when I get the husbands on their own or my male friends on their own away from their partners, the ones I can actually see resemble Pavlov's dogs, they'll admit to me that, yeah, I'm tired. I wish I could just live your life for one day. And honestly, the opposite is true for me. When I visit these guys and, you see, when I observe them with their children, I can see the small rays of sunshine that they're getting by sacrificing 95% of their lives. Whereas they can't see the 5% I'm sacrificing for the 95% of sunshine in my life. Um, anyway, it's just interesting. They're wanting me to jump into the water and say, show the shark who's boss. My comeback is always, you want me to jump into the water? Okay, sell it to me, convince me. Why should I? Anyway, guys, think for yourself. Talk to you later. If you appreciate my content and want to say thanks, you can donate via the links below. A massive thank you to the recent donations of people on screen now. You guys are the absolute best. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. And let me know if you'd rather not have your name shown on screen. And finally, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of my next video. If you're still not being notified of my videos, I've outlined some steps in the low bar. Thanks, guys.